Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Newcastle United. It is the final game of the season. It is the game where we could finish probably third in the table if we can beat Leicester City. If things go real bad, and I mean real bad, we could technically finish fifth. But there will need to be a nine goal swing between Southampton and whoever they're playing. Also Manchester City need to make sure they win their game as well. So... The ball is most definitely in our court. Also, I am officially the best manager ever in Football Manager ever. Did I mention that? Ever? The best one ever. Because the board have no criticisms. Nothing at all to criticise me about. We are third in the table. We are, what are we, this is our fourth season back in the Premier League. We have steadily climbed up that table. We are now arguably one of the best in the country, arguably. We're probably not. There are probably teams better than us who have finished below, but still, we're going to finish in the top four, hopefully. Can you tell that I'm not massively confident, although I really should be, because if we look at our last set of fixtures, we haven't lost in our last four games. We've only conceded twice. Yes, one of them was a match against Chelsea in the Europa League quarterfinal, which we ultimately lost, but still, we've won our last four league games anyway. Well, the final games of the season then. Southampton are away from home against Aston Villa. Aston Villa are not relegated. The bottom three of our season was sorted a long, long time ago. So Aston Villa are technically safe. They've got nothing to play for. Southampton, obviously, the much better side in this scenario. So they're going to be expecting a victory. Manchester City, the other one, they are playing away from home against Swansea. Swansea in a similar position to Aston Villa by the looks of it. Nothing to really play for. So you have to expect that both Saints and Manchester City will win their game, which means it's down to us against Leicester to make sure we can do the business as well. Also, I completely didn't mention, the top of the table was not decided. Manchester United and Liverpool can both win the league. Manchester United at home against Brighton. Liverpool are also at home against Arsenal. So Liverpool arguably have the much harder match to play. Brighton, where are Brighton? Brighton are bottom of the table. Man United have won the league, okay? That's what's going to happen. The starting lineup then for the final game of the season in goal will be Adenam, a back three of Matthias Jakobsen, Fernando Zelaya and Harry Maguire. And I'm loving the fact that we've got lines between all of these players. Everybody there seems to be working really well together. The wing back is going to be Marlon Charles on the left hand side. It's going to be Jamie Shackleton on the right hand side. And I know what you're saying. Where's Johnny Santos? He's currently injured. He will be back very soon. And then you're thinking, where's Joe Willock? He's there. I'm just going to play Shackleton as a right back, okay? Leave me alone. Middle of the pitch will be Lewis Cook and Matteo Guendouzi. Christ Chirule is currently on the bench. He's just returned from injury. He's got a little bit of a fitness concern, so we're not going to play him. He might come on in the second half. Thiago Almada will be that attacking midfielder with Fite up and Nicky Monastero as the front two on the bench. We do have Wang. We've got Big Dids. We've got Chirule, as I've mentioned. We've also got Franco Di Matteo, Johan Mylod, Big Bobby Lewandowski and Eric Horn. Eric Horn is a new name, and Eric Horn will be probably making his debut today. Don't do a bad boy Bobby Mills and get yourself sent off. This is Eric Horn. He came through our youth intake a couple of seasons ago. He's now 17 years of age. Obviously, he's naturally a winger, but he's been training up as an attacking midfielder. He's not amazing current ability, one and a half star current ability, but he does have five star potential. Is he dubbed the next Ali McCoist or something along those lines? No, he's not. Is that because Scotland don't have any good former footballers? That's a good way to alienate loads of people from Scotland. Leicester City then are going to be playing Jack Butland in goal. Fair enough. Wan Basaka's there. Hamza Chowdhury still at Leicester. Is he getting good now? I'm assuming he is. He's, yep, he's pretty good. He's got obviously a fair amount of potential in the game. Hamza Chowdhury is starting to fulfil it. They've got Anthony Martial as their top goal scorer and their lead striker. Sun Hyun Min on that left-hand side as well. I'm thinking we should be able to beat these. Obviously, Four games in the league in the, in the spin, on the spin, where we haven't lost. So I'm hoping we can just keep it up. We do have Jamie Shackleton playing our position, which might be a problem. Four and a half minutes on the clock. Maguire with a long, long ball upfield. Finds Nicky Monasterio. He's got Fite up in the middle. Plays it back instead. It's Marlon Charles. Takes a few touches. Lewis Cook goes for goal. Rattles the top of the bar. Wan Basaka almost runs it into his own goal. Sabitza keeps it in play. Heads it down to Monasterio. This highlight's not over. Now it is. Well, we could have taken the lead there. Instead, Leicester have a free kick. And they've taken the lead. Benkovic has scored for Leicester. Man City also 1-0 up. Means we do drop down to fourth place. 
even if the worst happens and we lose to Leicester and Southampton win, like I said, there needs to be a nine-goal swing. Southampton need to win 5-0, we need to lose 4-0, and still then, we'll just be joint on goal difference. Well, so far, Leicester are battering us, aren't they? Four shots, five shots now, three on target. We've had one, which was that effort that did hit the bar. Nothing really is going on until we've got a throw. Sabitzer takes the throw. Southampton have taken the lead. Martial back to Sabitzer. Now Wan-Bissaka. Birch, or Binch, sorry, inside the area. That's a good name. Wan-Bissaka gets tackled but keeps hold of the ball. Soinuku to Chowdhury. Is that how you say it? Soinuku? Soin Soinchu? Don't know. Sun tries to cross the ball. Marlon Charles isn't going to get there. Sabitzer crosses it in, hits it straight into Marlon Charles, and Gwenduzi can get the ball clear. Hopefully, Monastero with a lovely bit of control. He's got Fite up in the middle. He goes round his man, he's still going, he's going to go for goal, Fite Arp has to score, and Fite Arp does score his first goal in open play in a very long time, if I'm not mistaken, his sixth goal for Newcastle United, it is 1-1, we are back into this game, another goal, and we will be finishing third, third place is a good place to finish, I didn't like the fact that Nicky Monasterio basically got greedy there, and because it was saved, is the only reason my Fiti Art managed to score his goal. There was also an effort there from Leicester. Over the bar, doesn't matter. We've got a corner. Almada takes it towards the middle. And oh my word, Matthias Jakobsen, his 10th goal of the season. A central defender getting double figures. We are 2-1 up now against Leicester City. It kind of came out of the blue, but I'm okay with that. Another goal from a corner as well. And that's the reason why I brought in Almada, because he can take corners. He's our only corner taker, but he's pretty good at them. There is a highlight straight after the goal. Oh dear. Son to Rodriguez to Soyuncu. Soyuncu, I still don't know how to say his name. Sabitza on the right finds Juan Basaka with lots and lots of space. Gets tackled by Marlon Charles but keeps hold of the ball. Does he cross it in? He tries. He does eventually cross it in. Chowdhury isn't going to get there. He does now. Soyuncu across to Rodriguez. I'm going to just stop saying his name and at some point. Rodriguez crosses in. Sabitza on the head. His effort is just over the bar. We've got 10 minutes to play of the first half. We are somehow in the lead of this game, and I'm not quite sure how we've done that. We've got five minutes to play, and we do have another highlight. It's Marlon Charles on the left-hand side. The attacking wing-back keeps going down that left-hand side. He's got four, five in the box. Nicky Monasterio is one of them, but Jack Butland can easily hold on to the Argentinian shot. Half time then, we are 2-1 up, Manchester City are 1-0 up, Southampton are 1-0 up, Manchester United have have won the league, they've won the league thanks to a Leon Bailey hat-trick in the first half, fair enough, I mean, it's unlikely, bottom of the table, Brighton are going to claw that one back, also, Arsenal beating Liverpool, so even though, even, even regardless of what happens there, if that stays that way, Man United will win the league, obviously, we don't care about that, we care about what's happening, at Leicester, we care about what we're going to do. The second half is up next. We are still third place in the table. Don't think we're going to do any changes, although someone, Lewis Cook, is on a 6.4. So Christ Chole is going to come on. Swap you two over. I know Chole can't play as a ball winner midfielder. I know I am completely aware of this, but I'd rather play Gwendouzi in his natural position than two players not in their natural position. And Christ Chole is an absolute beast. So whatever he wants to do, he can probably do it half decently. Well, good news for me. Leicester have subbed off the uh, the Turkish central defender, whose name I can't pronounce properly. That's good. Son with the ball. We are just four minutes or five minutes into the second half. Rodriguez on that left-hand side, number 58. Strange number to be. I don't know if there's a reason behind that. Son gets it back. Sabitzer, long, long way away from the goal, though. Liao to Binch. Wan Basaka on the right. Crosses in, hits Marlon Charles. Binch is going to collect it once again. Gets tackled by Christ Chole. Finds Nicky Monasterio. He's got Fite Arp in the middle if he wants to try and pass to him. He probably doesn't because he's greedy. He does pass to Fite Arp. Fite Arp is very grateful. And the German gets his seventh goal of the season. His second goal of the game. We are 3-1 up against Leicester City. We are finishing third place in the Premier League. We are in the Champions League next season. Unless it all goes massively wrong. Which with, what, 40 minutes to play? Seriously doubt that. I honestly... Can't believe how well this season has gone for me. Oh, great. Thanks, Nicky. So, monastero has gone and got himself injured. It's time. It is time. Yes, Almada is not a striker, but we're going to do it anyway. Swap you two over. I'm sure you could play... You could be a pressing forward, possibly. Yeah, you'll be fine. You're only lacking the strength and bravery. So, Eric Horn will be coming on to make his debut. The, the position... I only said the title. The third place in the league is basically secure now. 
so Eric Horn can come on and run riot. Adenam has the ball in his hands. The Brazilian goalkeeper, that was a highlight. What? That was... Really? Okay, fair enough. Marlon Charles with a throw. Fite up. Back to Marlon Charles. Is he going to cross it in? Is he going to cross it in? Is he going to cross it in? No, he's not. He's going to go for goal himself. It's a very good effort. And Jack Butland makes a save. We have a corner. Is it Almada going to take the corner? It is not. It is Christ Chole going over this time to take the corner. It's towards the back post. Benkovic, the goal scorer for Leicester, gets the ball clear. We've got another throw. Jakobsen, one of our goal scorers, finds Almada. Plays it back to Jakobsen inside his own half. Now Gwenduzi. Plays it all the way across. Finds Marlon Charles once again. Marlon Charles pulls a lot of strings in our game. Shackleton, first time we've seen him all game. Is he going to cross it in? Is he going to get fouled? Who knows? He's crossed it in. Marlon Charles is at the back post. And Marlon bloody Charles gets his seventh goal of the season. I'm pretty sure he scored in the last game of the season last year as well, didn't he? It is 4-1 now against Leicester. 4-1. We are starting to absolutely batter them now. Jean-Pierre has just come on. Jean-Pierre, our former player, has just come on for Leicester City. Although it's going to be way, way too little too late. We've got 10 minutes or so to play. Corner for Leicester. Rodriguez takes it towards the back post. And once again, Benkovic almost scores. Rodriguez gets it back. Martial heads down. Benkovic on the volley. This time, Adanam saves it. We're probably going to see some goal line technology. Or no, no, we're not. Rodriguez's corner comes in. Zelaya gets the ball clear. End the highlight now, please. End the highlight. No, maybe, maybe, no, you sure? No, fair enough. Liao plays the ball in. Martial's going to collect it, keeps it in play. That You should have ended the highlight earlier. Well, we've seen the goal kick. So Adanam plays it to Shackleton, the makeshift right back, back to Jakobsen. He's going to go all the way back to Adenam. Strange highlight so far. Shackleton once again on that right-hand side. Left-footed ball in the middle to Eric Horn, the youngster. Chole to Marlon Charles. Still a youngster as well by his own right. Fite up on a hat-trick now. Goes for goal. Forces a good save out of Jack Butland. It's going to be another corner. Think this might be Almada. It's not. It's Zelaya, the central defender, going over to take it. Harry Maguire is there. Can't get the ball in front of his former friend, I assume. Although he probably wasn't at Leicester at all when any of these players were there. It's a throw for Leicester. Liao collects it. Plays it back to Charles Silva. Which I, I like that name. Fite Arp defending. Why is Fite Arp defending? I don't know why. Marlon Charles just gets the ball upfield. Swaza is going to collect it. What is this highlight? This is a very strange highlight. All the way back to Butland. Lumps it upfield. Header down by, I think it was Chowdhury. Rodriguez across. Charles Silva on the right. Crosses in. Back post is Anthony Martial. It is for 2 I could have sworn he was offside. Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? The ball goes across. Charles Silva, obviously the one who crosses it in. We're not going to find out because he was off camera. Rodriguez with a free kick at the back post is Sun. Adanam makes a save. I think Sun was offside. Looking at the match stats, we have not deserved to win this game. 20 shots to our 11. We've scored four of them. I mean, I'll take it. I will definitely take it. Obviously, we've finished third place in the table. Third place in the Premier League with a Newcastle side that we took up from the championship. We were champions of the championship. We then finished mid-table-ish, I think. Then, what, seventh? Now we've finished third place in the table. We're going on a proper European adventure next season. One with lots of money. Well, there you see the final league table then. Manchester United are champions. They won 4-0 in the end against Brighton. Liverpool did turn it around against Arsenal to win 2-1. But obviously the United result meant that they were never going to get caught. We have finished third place. Two points clear of, of the second place. Of fourth place, Manchester City. The team that beat us in the Carabao Cup final. Up yours, Man City. We actually did better than you in the Premier League. Southampton have to finish down in fifth place. They did win against Villa. I'm confused as to why only one Europa League spot is here. I don't understand that, but it doesn't really matter, does it? We finished third. We're in the Champions League straight into the group stages as well next season. So some of our players have picked up some bonuses for qualifying for the Champions League. The one that amuses me the most is uh, Moez Abcha, who I think is currently on loan at Coventry. There you go. He's done nothing at all to contribute to that. And he's just been given, what, 17? 17 and a half thousand pounds for doing absolutely bugger all for Newcastle. Right. Now, this was not what I was expecting. This was not what I was expecting, but our transfer budget next season is 6.24 million pounds. Um, I have to admit, I did kind of spend a lot of money in January. So I can understand why. Was hoping for a little bit of money. It, it's probably a good thing, because honestly... 
I don't think we need to buy anybody. The only people we need to buy are replacements for people who we're going to sell. I have no plans on selling anyone at the moment. I've got a new right back who is already joining the club. He's going to be a second choice right back behind our first choice right back of Johnny. We're still going to have Willikin and Shackleton as well, who in theory are right backs now because I've basically made them right backs. So yeah, having just £6.24 million transfer budget, it's not the end of the world, I don't think. We're just going to have to deal with it next season. We have just been given nearly £40 million for finishing third, but obviously we're not going to get any of that money ourselves. We've already got our end of season awards as well, literally just a day later. So overall best 11, Freddie Woodman is the goalkeeper, Suta, Panzo and Jakobsen. I'm, I'm not surprised, but I think within the next few years we're going to see Zelaya turning up in that list almost certainly. Marlon Charles and Matthew Mori as our two wingbacks. Charles is that first choice left wingback now, guaranteed. Chole and Longstaff in the middle of the pitch. Almiron still as that attack midfielder with Joel Linton and Monasterio. This is going to have to change, but I admit I do rotate my attack midfielders probably every season. I bring a new one in. So maybe Almada is going to stick as that attack midfielder. Chole and Longstaff. Longstaff's going to probably change for Lewis Cook. And we're also. Johnny Panzo will be that right winger. Nicky Monasterio, Fite Arp. That'll be Fite Arp, won't it? End of season awards then. Marlon Charles is player of the season with Christ Choli and Nicky Monasterio. These are two players, I will say, that I discovered. I discovered Christ Choli and Nicky Monasterio. And by I, I mean our scouts found them and went, hey, look at this guy. Marlon Charles came for our youth system. Fernando Zelaya picking up goal of the season. That is going to be a free kick because everything he scored was a free kick. Fite Arp signing of the season. I Okay, I mean, I guess we didn't buy too many other players. Marlon Charles, young player of the season. That's team of the season you can probably list off because it's the team that we always play. So let's take a look then at this Fernando Zelaya free kick. It will definitely be a free kick. There you go. Free kick from a reasonable distance. Goalkeeper should have saved it. Not the best goal of the season. So some stats then, Nicky Monasterio, top goalscorer with 24, Chris Chole, 7.27 average rating, Johnny Santos with 9 assists, Adonam passing it 92% of the time, straight to Fernando Zelaya, Marlon Charles with 7 man of the matches, Lewis Cook loves a yellow card, Marlon Charles, Chris Chole and Johnny Santos love a red card. Club Vision, Club Vision then, I'm sure these are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, aren't they? I'm sure they're getting bigger. I mean, these are things that I've been doing anyway. I've been doing this. I've been maybe not so much signing high reputation players. Arguably, Fiti Arp and, and big Bobby Lewandowski, I'd say they're pretty high reputation. Almada, probably pretty high reputation. Harry Maguire, pretty high reputation as well. We've still got the build a new stadium thing, which obviously we have no real well, progression towards. Next season, top off. They they don't care. They They are quite happy for us to be distracted by the Champions League as long as we get through the group stages. I mean, I feel like that's harsh. They want us to get through the Champions League group stages, but don't care if we lose to Brighton. Although Brighton have just been relegated. Don't care if we lose to Norwich. And then amusingly as well, the next four seasons or three seasons is try and qualify for the Europa League and then eventually qualify for the Europa League. I mean, I feel like our, um, our chairman hasn't actually been paying attention to the football just been paying attention to what money I'm spending. Right, pre-season tour then. We're going to go off to the US of A. What else have we got? A little bit of lone player roundup. Not too fussed with that. Oh, I did not see this coming. Nicky Monasterio, top goal scorer in the Premier League. 23 years of age, 19 goals, 2 assists. Just beating Thomas Buitink with 18 goals. But 8 assists for Buitink. Monasterio, a little bit greedy, not going to lie. And Christ Chiole picking up young players... English Players Young Player of the Year Award. So that's the one where players who play in England have voted for a player and they voted for Christ Chole. That's confusing. My brain now hurts. Right, we are going to end this episode in this season here with Christ Chole on screen. And one thing I will say, and I pointed out a while ago, just shortly after we signed him, his personality, he is a mercenary. He has a pre-concern. He wants to move to a bigger club. Now, we are a Champions League side, Christ. We are in the Champions League. We are a big club. Everyone in Newcastle sees that we're a big club. Everyone in England should be now seeing that we're a big club. Why aren't you? Don't be leaving me in the summer. If you do go, you're going for a huge fee.
Thank you very much for watching this episode and this season of Football Manager 2020 with Newcastle United. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I'll be back next time with Season 8, I think it's Season 8, isn't it? With Newcastle United, where we go on a much more elaborate and much more fancy European adventure, where we head our way into the Champions League group stages and probably get knocked out in the, qualifi or the first knockout round against Ludogorets or somebody. <laughs>